I just made this really basic, hashtag basic drink with uh, sparkling water. I think I just showed you with like sparkling water and limes and some ice in this reusable, not really reusable, but I'm using it, plastic cup. It is so good. I highly recommend if you have limes and sparkling water hanging about, make that drink, it's really good. I use limes from my Misfits box. Have you ever heard of that company? I just start. I just started like a monthly subscription with Misfits. This isn't um, a sponsored post or anything like that, but Misfits is like a company that ships you at a discount price, a lot of organic produce that farmers can't sell in the store because of cosmetic reasons. Like there's bruises or there's, or it just doesn't look I guess grocery stores really want very pretty, appealing food. But I mean, the food that Misfits sends you every week, I got like $35. I, the box was like $35, but it was tons and tons of produce. I'm actually, I can show you a video, like insert here, but, and it was so beautiful too. All of the greens, all of the fruits, everything. And it looks like, you know, I can't believe that grocery stores return this food down, but apparently they do. And there's a lot of food waste going on because grocery stores just, are unwilling to buy stuff that are bruised. And I mean, granted the population, the, the public is just doesn't wanna buy that either, but Misfits really, I guess, helps that to some degree. Uh, I'm really liking it, but yeah, I used some lemons from that box and small lemons. I also think I got avocados and greens and Swiss chars and chard and things like that. It's so good, I highly recommend it. But anyway, I was just sort of organizing the pantry today, just making sure everything was in line and like the spices were, alphabetized, alpha, alphabetized? Yeah, and I came across the coconut oil in my pantry and I was thinking to myself, a lot of people on the interwebs talk about coconut oil as being a very moisturizing product. That is definitely true to some degree, but to claim it as a moisturizer is very, at least it's a half truth because coconut oil in itself isn't moisturizing in the truest sense of the term. Now, I use coconut oil a lot on my face. I've used it on my hair before too, but uh, I use it on my face for like a double cleanse. So I'll, I'll put the coconut oil on my face before I go into the shower to sort of break up a uh, water resistant sunscreen that I have on my face and any sort of, any other sort of cosmetic ingredients that I might have, but usually just like tinted mineral water resistant sunscreen that's kind of hard to get off with uh, cleanser alone. So I'll put that on my skin and it breaks it up and then I wash it off with a gentle soap-free cleanser. But the thing that I don't like about coconut oil is that it is, it can exacerbate, at least any oil that you put on your skin can, for some people, exacerbate acne conditions um, as well as feed bacteria in the scalp that, that can cause dandruff and seborrheic dermatitis, or just like the flaky skin that just sort of comes off in like your scalp and, and your face and things like that. So coconut oil is an emollient. So there, a moisturizer in the true sense of the term is something that provides moisture or water. Coconut oil, pretty much all oils are hydrophobic, so they don't really mix with water. They don't really have a ton of water in them if at all, if I'm if I'm correct. And it and coconut oil doesn't supply actual moisture into the skin. It doesn't supply the water that if you buy a moisturizer at the store, it's going to have, you know, it's going to have water in it. It's going to have other ingredients as well. Coconut oil is an emollient. It's coconut oil is an emollient. So, let me just take a sip of my water. Coconut oil is an emollient. So moisturizers contain typically water uh, as the first ingredient to provide that moisture, but they also contain things like emollients, like coconut oil, which sort of soften the skin. So coconut oil is incredibly good at softening the skin and perhaps even supplying fatty acids to the skin that may potentially be beneficial for the, for the skin, for the protection, the skin barrier. But moisturizers also contain occlusive agents, which sort of form a thin barrier or a, a layer on the skin that helps to prevent the, uh, the evaporation of water from the skin. So it helps to prevent trans epidermal water loss. And also moisturizers, they contain something called humectants, which are, which are things like glycerin and hyaluronic acid that can actually bind to water and draw water from the atmosphere, as well as from the, the deeper layers of the skin tissue and, and bring it up to sort of plump up the skin. But if you don't have an occlusive to really trap and form that barrier to prevent that evaporation, you're not really getting a, a good all-in-one all moisturizer. Same thing with emollients. If you're just using coconut oil as a moisturizer, 
you're not supplying the moisture to your skin. You're not supplying that water that you lose as time goes on. Uh, and then also you're just smoothing out the skin and you're not, you're not plumping it up. You're not really providing it everything that it needs that a moisturizer that's formulated with all of these ingredients, water, humectants, occlusive agents, as well as emollients like coconut oil or again, any type of oil, you're not getting the benefits, the pure benefits of a true moisturizer. So there are some benefits of coconut oil that some research and evidence-based benefits that suggest that it may actually be beneficial for the skin to some degree. So there, I know there are studies out there showing that it may potentially protect from UVB to a very small degree. I mean, it's not going to be like anything that you find in a, like a sunscreen. So, you know, potentially, you know, if you have a sunscreen that contains derivatives of coconut or, or something like that potentially maybe it protects adds an extra layer of protection against uvb i remember reading a study recently and i don't remember when it was published but i can just link it down below but there there was one study showing that the topical application of coconut oil actually interacts with protein coding genes on the outermost layer of the epidermis that can play a role in improving skin barrier function through I possibly through like an anti-inflammatory effect. So coconut oil has some anti-inflammatory compounds that when added, as well as antioxidant compounds. So there's, there's some evidence to suggest that the topical application of coconut oil can help to protect the skin barrier. There's also another study showing that it can help protect against or, imp or reduce the rate of trans epidermal water loss. I think there was like a, there was like an eight week study of participants who used coconut oil, and then another group that was randomized to mineral oil. And mineral oil is also a great occlusive and emollient agent. But the study found that there was significant reductions in trans epidermal water loss or the evaporation of water from the skin. So people were actually able to maintain more moisture as, as time went on, as they continued to apply the coconut oil. Um, I'm not sure if they were applying other moisturizers at the same time. I mean, that's also something that you have to definitely be, be diligent about. And I'm not really sure how you would go about that. Maybe apply the coconut oil to your skin first and then the moisturizer after. I, I think it's probably best to find a product that has already formulated coconut oil in it. And there's also like a study, I think, I was reading about a study today, it was like in rats, I think, and we're not mice, we're not mouse a animal models, we're humans, but so I don't know how well these findings generalize to humans, but the study was showing that how showing that the application, the topical application of coconut oil onto the skin of mice actually increased collagen synthesis. That's actually pretty promising. But the thing about coconut oil is if you are prone to dandruff or seborrheic dermatitis where you have like flaky scalp or skin, that is driven by bacteria um, that is fed by oil. So coconut oil can really exacerbate that. It can also exacerbate acne conditions. It can possibly help or possibly not help, but facilitate breakouts. And it's, 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 it's probably better or more prudent for you to find a product. I would, I would think that is formulated with coconut oil in it. I think that makes more sense, right? Cause I think manufacturers can, can really tone down on you know, just pure coconut oil. And it has all, all these other ingredients that are interacting with each other too that can just sort of help to reduce the, the oiliness and, the, and just the purity of pure coconut oil. Granted, I use coconut oil as my first step in the double cleanse. I highly recommend a double cleanse, especially if you wear makeup or water-resistant tinted sunscreen like I do, especially mineral sunscreen. I find like, I find that really, mineral sunscreen is a lot harder to get off. I hope that just sort of clears up the confusion about coconut oil. If someone is telling you to use coconut oil as a moisturizer because you have dry skin, don't listen to those people because <laughs> your skin is not going to be less dry just by using coconut oil as your sole go-to moisturizer. Because again, it's not providing moisture, it's not providing water, it's, and it's not trapping that water in your skin. While it can help potentially you know, reduce the evaporation of water, if you're not supplying your skin with that extra that extra moisture that water through a actual moisturizer and then having those other ingredients like the occlusives is just sort of trap in that water your your skin just going to be drier and it's going to it's just it's not going to it's not going to work for you so i highly recommend if you are going to use coconut oil use it in conjunction with a moisturizer and really all oil actually i used to use coconut oil and 
rosehip seed oil as a standalone moisturizer and I was very shiny, I was very oily, but it didn't, my, my skin was still dry. I would wake up in the, in the morning and my skin still felt dry. I didn't really know what to do about that. And I was getting dandruff like out like crazy. It, it, it just wasn't working. And I was using coconut oil because I thought it was, you know, it's, a, it's an all natural one ingredient product that is not going to, you know, it, if it does seep into your, your blood or something like that, it's not probably not going to do a great deal of damage. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a researcher, so I can't say for sure, but I just assume that like, I don't know, it, it was just a natural ingredient. And But the thing about that is when you put on an oil, it's going to slowly but surely react to your body temperature, which is like 98.7 or whatever, and it's going to just sort of melt and slide off. So you're not going to be really absorbing much. You're not going to be getting, it, it's just going to slide off, especially if you are going to sleep in it. It's you're not going to see a lot of benefits from that. So it's best that you just use a moisturizer that has coconut oil in, infused in it if you really want to have the benefits or the potential benefits of coconut oil. Granted, there are a slew of ingredients out there, a slew of, of oils and a myriad of, of types of products out there that can you know, possibly even be more effective than coconut oil because things like coconut oil and oils, that there's pre preliminary research. There's things like there's animal research, th things showing that it may be helpful for atopic dermatitis, but a lot of the things, it's hard to generalize because some of it's like in vitro cell-based cultures or rats again. So it's just, I don't know, it's, it's really hard to, to know for sure, but that's coconut oil for you. <laughs> it's been getting dark at like 4.30 every night. I feel like every time it gets dark, cause it's, we're going into the winter, right? So it, every time it gets dark, around this time like at 4 30 and it's like pitch black outside all i want to do is just like go to bed at like seven o'clock i actually did that a couple of times like i was so sleepy at just seven o'clock in the winter that i just went to bed and then woke up the next morning at like seven so I had like 12 hours of sleep i felt amazing but it's just not very productive i don't know so it's sometimes it can be hard to be productive in the winter i would think in the summer in the spring in the fall <laughs> so basically anytime basically i'm eating my Benito chips. Have you ever had these? These are, I assume these are fried. They're probably not baked, but they are made from, they are made from black beans and navy beans. So there's no corn in here. And it's, I think it's GMO free. Is it? I don't know. I don't think it says GMO free. It's gluten free. Oh yeah, it is GMO free. Okay. Non-GMO project. I'm not sure what that means, but I like them. Actually, those aren't Benitos. These are bean fields. Bean fields. These are the jalapeno bean fields. I really like Benitos. I like the the cheddar like cuffs. Those are really good. Those are made from white navy beans, I think. And then I also like their like their tortilla chips. I use that for salsa and guacamole. I like to just sort of reduce my reliance on corn and grains. And it's just so amazing that there's products out there now that are made from beans. You can make you can get pasta from made from beans or lentils. You can get chips made from beans. And these are, I would think, lower on the glycemic index than regular like chips, um, corn tortilla chips, because it has four grams of fiber, fiber, also four grams of protein. So the protein and the fiber really help to just sort of lower the glycemic index and just lower the, or, or reduce the exertion that grains and carbohydrates can have on your blood sugar. So it, you know, may help to just sort of control the, those insulin spikes and the inflammation associated with it, which can go a long way. I mean, making sure that you have insulin under control and inflammation as best as you can under control can do so much for longevity and, and, and other sort of, potentially other sort of con conditions. Again, I'm not a doctor, so I can't say for sure.